Have you ever looked through a speedboat sliced through water? The movement of water in this case is an example of a free shear flow. In nature, there are three types of free shear flows. Jets, wakes and mixing layers. In this lesson, we will focus on wakes and mixing layers. Wakes are easy to observe on water. All we have to do is to watch the water trails left behind by a moving boat. This happens even though the boat is not fully immersed in one fluid. These wakes appear on the air-water interface. In external viscous flows, wakes are formed when the flow over a body separates from its surface. This creates a low-pressure region behind it. These wakes are common behind a moving airplane or an automobile. We also see this behind bluff bodies like baseball. Depending on the flow field and the boundary layer around a solid object, we can have either laminar or turbulent wakes. In this lesson, we will learn about both these wakes and estimate their velocity profiles. In some sense, a wake is a velocity defect in the free stream velocity and occurs due to boundary layer separation. This defect is given by delta u. If we consider a thin airfoil parallel to the free stream, the generated wake is smooth whose velocity defect decays uniformly with distance from the airfoil. The traveling wake immediately downstream of the airfoil is still developing and non-similar. However, it becomes developed further downstream of the solid object and in this region, we consider the velocity profiles to be self-similar. Assuming this velocity defect to be small compared to the free stream velocity, we can linearize the convective form of the momentum equation. We use approximate boundary conditions to obtain the following analytical solution for laminar wakes. Here, the constant C is obtained by equating the overall drag force to the momentum flux defect. Based on this, the centerline velocity of the wake decays at the rate of square root of x in the far field region. The drag force estimated from the momentum flux defect is equated with a known value to obtain the final solution of the velocity defect. It is observed that the wake velocity defect is proportional to this drag coefficient. To solve for the velocity defect, we need to know the value of the drag coefficient. For example, in the case of a flat plate, the drag coefficient is given by the following equation. Replacing this in the above analysis, we obtain the wake velocity defect for a flat plate. To understand the solution better, let's plot the wake velocity as a function of y, which is the perpendicular distance to a flat plate at different x locations downstream of the wake. For a constant value of x, the wake velocity increases from the center line to the free stream velocity. Moreover, the center line velocity is continuously increasing as we move further downstream. In other words, the velocity defect decays further as the wake moves downstream. A similar approach is useful to analyze a 2D turbulent flow. Based on the similarity principle, the following conditions for a turbulent wake are obtained. Following an approach similar to the turbulent jet for the eddy viscosity formula, we estimate the velocity solution in the form of a Gaussian profile. The constants in the equation delta u max and y half are estimated from experimental results. Srinivasan and Narsimha in 1982 
propose the following growth rate expressions to obtain these constants. The self-similar mean velocity defect is plotted against the dimensionless distance for a turbulent wave. This data was obtained from different types of bodies such as cylinders, screens, and airfoils. These wakes achieve self-similar solutions after several hundreds of momentum thicknesses downstream of the bodies. For most turbulent solutions, we need to depend on experiments to obtain some solution. To obtain more accurate results, we turn our attention to high-fidelity CFD simulations to analyze these free shear flows. So now that you've understood wakes, the next time you find yourself waiting on the runway for flights ahead of you to take off, you be more patient, right? You know your pilot is just watching to be far behind the wake of a previous flight to avoid its turbulent wake. A mixing layer is another type of free shear flow. A mixing layer is formed when the two flow streams with different velocities mix freely. A smoke from the chimneys of an industrial plant mixes freely with the atmospheric gases. At the mouth of the chimney, the flow is regarded as a round turbulent jet. In fact, the region immediately downstream of the planar jet is regarded as a mixing layer. Moreover, in the far field region, the smoke interacts with the moving cloud as a mixing layer. Another example of a mixing layer is when air blows over the surface of a lake. In this case, the mixing is between two different immiscible fluids, which requires the knowledge of some additional physics. Similar to the treatment of wakes, we can have laminar and turbulent mixing layers. Let us analyze a plane mixing layer first. Consider two fluid flows with properties given by subscripts 1 and 2 are separated by a thin flat plate. As the mixing layer expands, the fluid viscosity smooths the velocity profile leading to the formation of an S-shaped shear layer. Here, the velocity in the region of the shear layer is varying smoothly and outside this layer, the velocity asymptotes out to their respective free stream velocities. An approximate analytical solution can be provided by following the same similarity solution approach. The similarity variables employed for this analysis are written out for each fluid region and the third order ordinary differential equation is solved using the following boundary conditions. Here, K is defined as the ratio of products of density and viscosity between fluid 1 and 2. This equation cannot be solved analytically and we use numerical approach for the solution. In this plot, when the velocity of fluid 1 is half of fluid 2 and the two fluids are the same, the self-similar solution obtained are as follows. When the fluid 1 is at rest, the velocity ratio becomes 0 and the S-shaped smooth curve becomes rounder. In this case, if we have two different fluids, and the value of k increases, the slope of the velocity profile is discontinuous at the interface of the two fluids. The larger the value of k, the more the deviation from a typical smooth S-shaped curve. In fact, for k equal to 60,000, which is the value based on air and water, the discontinuity becomes much more apparent. When k tends towards infinity, we arrive at the Blasius solution for the flat plate. In a similar manner, 
Turbulent mixing layer can also be analyzed using a similarity approach. Gottler proposed the following similarity variables for a turbulent mixing layer. Unlike the lamina case, these dimensionless velocities for turbulent case uses the mean velocity. Here, ERF refers to the error function and its definition is as follows. We define the layer thickness to be a point where U star becomes 0.99. Based on this definition, the growth layer is estimated as tan 7 degrees. From the similarity solution, the obtained plot shows the self-similar solution for turbulent mixing layer. Here, the x-axis is non-dimensionalized using the definition of shear thickness defined as follows. As observed, we again obtain a smooth S-shaped curve for the self-similar solution of the mean velocity.